This project is the Milwaukee River OU2 Remedial Design Project located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The basis of this project is to clean up contamination in the Milwaukee River within the third ward due to a decommissioned manufactured gas plant. Some things that are unique about this project really is the urban setting. The challenges and all the multitude of stakeholders were working in and around high rises where we have to drive large sections of sheet piling, we're dredging in a very, very busy section of the Milwaukee River and the waterway, and then ultimately getting 45,000 cubic yards of sediment out of the old Third Ward, which is a, an area of concern under the Great Lakes Legacy Act, pumped far away here at the dredge management disposal facility. Along with high traffic on the river, much of the work is being performed right along a boardwalk, and public has access within 10 to 15 feet of the working equipment. It's really important to have a contractor to kind of come in and help get from 60 to 100 percent because you have the constructability aspects, you have a better understanding of your risks and developing risk registers. The big part of this project was the water treatment system. Brandon was brought on to basically design the treatment system that ultimately was a part of the 100 percent design. Prior to us mobilizing the project site, treatability test was done in the sediment to confirm that we could remove the material hydraulically, pump it into geotubes, into water it efficiently. It also allowed us to pick the proper chemical uh, to show up with on day one. There was a concern about free oil that might be released during the dewatering efforts and we added a thickener and clarifier to the design such that any free oil would float to the surface and could be removed before it went to dewatering in the geotextile tubes. When we look at how the project was implemented as far as like dredge pipeline being out of the way, driving the sheet pile, storage of sheet pile, we actually ended up ordering the sheet pile early to get it on time because of the COVID impact. And by doing that, we were able to procure the steel and keep the price locked in well before the project began. I think a lot of us have forgotten that Really, we were at the tail end of COVID with issues with getting steel, getting permits, and Brennan came up with an upland installation of the sheet pile wall, which really was able to get us in the water working sooner in 2023 to keep this to a one season job, which was millions of dollars in savings. Additionally, we mobilized two plants to the project and two dredges to the project, which allow us to complete the project expeditedly. And those hydraulic dredges were plumbed with approximately 20,000 feet of pipeline. The water treatment facility was quite a ways away from the project. We pumped about 20,000 feet from the river out into Lake Michigan with a submerged line. The water then went to a CDF, and then we drew out of that CDF pumped it into the water treatment plant, treated the water there, and then the water was returned to Lake Michigan. For a dewatering process, the mud and the sediment comes from the dredge. It's dredged up here into the thickener here and a shaker screen up top. The shaker deck has a screen which filters a lot of the debris that can potentially clog our pumps and clog our hoses before going through the filtration system. Anything larger than two inches is taken out and put into a disposal bin. The sediment from there goes out to the dewatering pad into the bags where we hit it with a polymer. The material falls out into the tubes, the water comes out of those tubes, it goes into a sump where the water treatment plant begins to pull it out of there with a sump pump. From there, they put it through the multimedia filters. From the multimedia filters, it goes into these bag filters right here, into some organo clay filters, and then finally into some GAC filters, which is granulated activated carbon and from there it gets discharged back to Lake Michigan. Every hour we do grab samples. We check the turbidity, we check the pH, and we have to check the differential pressures, the filters. Those differential pressures tell us how dirty the filters are getting. On top of our hourly monitoring samples, we pull weekly compliance samples. Those get sent into a certified lab and those are reported to the state to verify that we're meeting on discharge permits. We've met all the requirements given by the state and the permitting departments to be able to discharge water back to the bay. So the capping process was in a very small area. We also needed to put down organo clay in different layers. We had to go underneath some very difficult obstructions where we could not access. So we actually tremied some of that material or piped it in underneath. Just very small, difficult areas compared to our normal larger capping areas that we deal with. Once capping is done, divers cut the sheets off. There's more capping and then that sheet stays in. The top 16 feet of sheeting above the bottom of the floor will come out. The public will benefit from this project by just having a cleaner river and hopefully be able to use the resources. There will be additional cleanups that are done, but this is the first step in that process. Communication has been really important to the success of this project. From a safety perspective, it's been big because we are so spread out in this area. Brennan has really folded us in and the other contractors that we have working on the project. It's been a great team and really kind of approaching it in a team attitude and we've implemented that throughout construction. And I think our group has worked very well together, both from a safety and production perspective.